Harold Douglas Baines, Chicago AL 1980 through 89, 96, 97, 2000, 2001. Texas AL 1989, 90. Oakland AL 1990, 1992. Baltimore AL 1993 through 1995, 1997 to 2000. Cleveland AL 1999. Respected and clutch left-handed hitter whose professional approach and humble demeanor made of one of the most consistent and reliable players of the 1980s and 1990s. Right fielder and heart of the lineup for 1983 AL West champion White Sox, persevered through knee injuries to earn outstanding designated hitter of the year award in his first two seasons at the position, 1987 and 1988 six-time All-Star and first overall selection in the 1977 MLB Draft, totaled 2,866 hits and drove in 1,628 runs, retiring 21st on the all-time RBI list. You know, Harold, uh, Joe, I've said this before, Hall of Famers age well. His second best season in terms of OPS was in 1999 at the age of 40. He had 312 with a 387 on base percentage. OPS of 919, 25 home runs, 103 RBIs. He walked away at the age of 42. He was a productive player from the beginning to the end. Well, that's 22 seasons. Yeah, and that's why we're sitting here today. So this is my guy, man. I'm excited to hear Harold speak, but it was such a joy to hit with him. And he really taught me, I'm in my 11th year in the big leagues, how to take the ball the other way. And with a one-hand release to stay on the ball longer and stronger to drive it the opposite way. Now everybody does that, right? He was one of the first guys that had that one-hand release. Ladies it just wasn't taught. From the Hall of yeah. Fame class of 2019, Harold Baines. Thank you, Jane. Uh, to all my friends and teammates, uh, you can start your stopwatch now to time how long this is going to be. I know you got a bet on it, so you can start your stopwatch now. Good afternoon, and thank you for that warm welcome. I want to thank Jane, Jeff, John, and Whitney, the Hall of Fame staff, for being so gracious and accommodating to me and my family. The hospitality has overwhelmed us and made us all feel so welcome in Cooperstown. Also, like to thank the members of the two committees who nominated and then selected me and Lee Smith for today's special honor. Many of my former teammates and quite a few of my former opponents are sitting behind me today. Thank you for making baseball the greatest game of all and for pushing so many of us to accomplish beyond our dreams. Congratulations as well to today's honoree, Roy Halliday and his wife, Brandy. Mike Messina, Mario Rivera, fellow DH Edgar Martinez. It is a humbling and a great honor for me to share today with you, each of you. Somewhere, someplace in my career, I acquired a reputation for not saying much. I'm not sure why. Maybe it was May 9th, 1984, when my home run ended our 25 inning game to beat the Milwaukee Brewers. When a writer approached me post game at my locker, one asked Harold, it appeared you got all of that one. Evidently, I said, and perhaps the reputation was born. My journey started in a small town on a Maryland Eastern Shore called St. Michael's. I owe a debt of gratitude to this entire close knit community for help raising me as a child and as a teenager. St. Michael's for me. I will not be where I am today in baseball or in life without so many people from St. Michael's who cared, cared enough to do more in their respective part to help a youngster like me. 
who may have had some athletic ability, but not a lot of us going on him from the 1970s. <clears throat> from teachers to coaches to town residents who showed me both kindness and discipline, I thank you all for what you've done for me. I cannot ever express enough appreciation for St. Michael's. It still remains my home till this day as I live there with my wife and family. If I could leave you with one message this afternoon, it is always to give back to your community so the next generation can enjoy an even greater opportunity. I stand here today very humbled by this honor. It has taken time to sink in, but moments like the Hall of Fame orientation, signing the wall where my flat would hang, and stand here today in front of tens of thousands of baseball fans. It makes it seem like less of a dream. As an 18-year-old from the Eastern Shore, I could not uh, imagine my career would leave me being selected in the first round by Hall of Famer Bill Beck, General Manager and Buckle Near winner Roland Heeman. Tony Larissa, thank you for giving me the opportunity to play in the major leagues and teach me a very important lesson. The game has always been played for the name on the front of the uniform, never for the one on the back. <laughs> to Jerry Reinsdorf, Chairman of the White Sox, thank you for allowing me to be a part of your organization for the last 30 years. The White Sox truly are my baseball family. Baseball took me to the great city of Chicago, where in some sense I grew up with teammates like Greg Lazinski, Colin Fiss, Ozzie Guillen, Greg Walker, Ryan Kittle, and so many others. With a few of these guys around, is there any surprise that I never ever said much? Each of these men enforced my career and helped bring me here today. I owe a special thank you to former White Sox head trainer Herm Schneider, as well as his staff, Mark Anderson, Brian Ball, Alan Thomas, for keeping me on the field despite so many troubling needs. And to my agent, Jack Sands, thank you for your friendship and for guarding my money all these years, my financial advisor. <laughs> Chicago became my home. White Sox fans became an important part of my extended family. Driving in Division I of September 9, 1983 remains one of my career highlights. Chicago is a city that honors and appreciates the hard work. I hope this is one of the reasons the White Sox fans connected with me and how I approached the game of baseball. But who could ever imagine an entire stadium led by Oregon's Nancy Faust chatting your name as you step into the batter's box? White Sox fans, Thank you for all the cheers and love over the years, and I hope I made you proud along the way. <laughs> My baseball journey did take me to many other stops, Texas, Oakland, home to Baltimore, and Cleveland, before I ended my career back with the White Sox, where as a bench coach on the 2005 team, we claimed the city of Chicago's first World Series in 88 years. What a celebration for two million White Sox fans on State and Wacker. I stand here today very appreciative of all the people who helped me reach to this point in my baseball career. Many are friends for life. I cannot thank them all. And I honestly look forward to personally thanking each, each of them with a handshake and a hug. But know how much I appreciate what you have done for me. I want to thank my many families and friends who traveled here to Cooperstown to be with us today several of my former teammates, and many of my friends from the White Sox office. As I mentioned at the start of my speech, I'm not an emotional man, except when it comes to family. I want to thank my wonderful mother, Gloria, my brothers, Linwood and Curtis, and my sister, Bertha. It means a lot to me that you guys are here today to share this special day. I love you. To my beautiful wife, Marla. Yeah. 
and been by my side every step of the way since high school, St. Michael's. Thank you, it's certainly not enough. We have been together at each amazing moment of our lives, and I'm so happy to share it today with you as well. You are the true Hall of Famer of our family. I love you. <laughs> to my children and their spouses, Antoinette and Charles, Brittany and Josh, Harold Jr. and Kalia, Courtney and Andrew, as well as the next Spain's family, our grandbabies. Marley, Camille, Madison, I love you very much. While baseball often took me away from you far too long, the game has given us a lot of so many special shared moments, memories like today. I'm very proud of the current people you have become. Your presence here today makes my journey complete. I owe so much to my father, Linwood, who through his words, and more importantly, his deeds, taught me how to approach life. You work at it, you put your head down, you keep your mouth shut, and you work at your craft day in and day out. He worked six days a week as a mason to support his family. He was a baseball player who loved the game, but his time came too soon. He passed away in 2014. I know I made him proud on the baseball field, but I know I made him even more prouder of the man, the husband, the father, the teammate, the friend I have become. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. And while you're not here today physically, we all know you are here in spirit, proud as you can be. So in the end, when you ask me why I never up was been outspoken or said very much, think of my dad and the lesson he passed on me many years ago, often as we played catch in the yard. As he taught me, words are easy, deeds are hard, words can be empty, deeds speak loudest, and sometimes they echo forever. Thank you.